I have therefore always been the odd one in my family, you know, the black sheep and all that. Like I'm 29 years old now, I have felt as like I don't fit in for practically forever. Samantha and David Thompson's eldest child, I grew up among doctors. Indeed, my parents were major players, but none of that wonderful stuff ever truly came my way. Tyler and Oliver, my younger twin brothers, shared all the advantages. From the second those two sprang out, as though I vanished from view to my parents. It began really modest. They might have a larger slice of cake or a new toy, but as we grew older it got considerably worse and quite clear-cut. When I reached ten, I recall having been hinting for years about this painting set I noticed on a shop window. Nothing wild, just a basic kit with some excellent colors and brushes. I got quite excited to open my one present when my birthday arrived, and what then do I find? A frightening arithmetic book. The favoritism started to show even more when I entered my teenage years. Family vacations were driven by the lad's preferences. Should Tyler feel like skiing? Boom. We are going to the slopes. Hello beach trip if Lucas was into surfing that year. My suggestions were always dismissed or shot down. Applications at colleges. Man, that is a delicate matter. I developed an interest in art restoration at 17. For hours, I would visit the nearby museum bothering the personnel with inquiries about how they restored historic paintings. You would have assumed I wanted to join the circus or something when I mentioned studying art restoration in college. Art rehabilitation? Mom cracked a laugh. Leela, get real here. That is not a suitable job. Yeah, Leela, Tyler said, flashing a haughty glance. Why don't you do something practical like become a doctor? I will never forget how pleased my parents seemed when Tyler mentioned that. That was the look I had never seen them produce. I was resolved to make it happen even though they lacked my back. I was ecstatic to learn I had a scholarship to study art restoration when acceptance letters for colleges started coming up. I recall racing into the kitchen waving the letter like a crazy person. Mom, Dad, I have a scholarship. Mom hardly looked from her medical journal. That's good, sweetheart. Did you find out the guys received perfect SAT scores? The day I left for college was quite different from two years later when the twins would go. Getting ready to ride the bus to my not-so-fancy public school, I packed second-hand laptop and thrift store clothing. Too preoccupied with their work, my parents could not even offer me a bus station ride. But one person, my grandma Samantha, saw me for who I was, just exactly. She showed up that day and drew me aside just before I was ready to go. She continued, Leela, sweetie, slipping a tiny packet into my hand, you really make me very proud, never forget that exactly. Within the envelope was a check not enough to transform my entire life, but enough to somewhat simplify things. More importantly, though, than the money was her real noticing of me that equated everything. For me, college was rather a mixed bag. I was at last free from always being judged against Tyler and Oliver on one hand. I could truly get right into my studies without feeling as though I were in some strange race for attention. Conversely, though, money was somewhat limited, that is, rather tight. Through family calls and social media, I would learn about all the luxury stuff my brothers were up to while I was barely surviving on my scholarship and part-time work. Of course, our parents paid for everything, including fancy frat parties, spring break visits to wild locations, internships at prestigious hospitals. Time passed and I pushed myself crazily into my studies, Restoring artwork evolved from what I wanted to do for a career into something greater. That was my happy place, my retreat, bringing beauty back to ancient, neglected objects and revealing the latent promise under layers of neglect and ruin has something rather fulfilling. Interned in this little yet esteemed museum in my last year, though largely cleaning and organizing, it was not elegant job. When I called home to let them know, I was over the moon. The answer from my mother was exactly what I had anticipated, lukewarm at most. She seemed unfocused as she said, 
Oh, that's nice, dear. Did you find out about Jack's study paper? It is appearing in a reputable medical publication. I let out a sigh of restraint. That's fantastic, Mom. Listen, I was considering spending a weekend home. Maybe we could. She cut me off sharply, saying, Oh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Your father and I will be really busy. You know, we are aiding the lads with their study papers. I sensed the familiar mix of hurt and rage developing in my chest as I hung up the phone, but this time there was also a tiny spark of resistance, of will. I looked around my small apartment at the art books stacked on my desk and at the half-finished restoration job occupying much of my floor. Now this was my world, one I had created for myself in spite of everything. I said, screw them, to the vacant room. I'm not depending on their permission. Still, a part of me knew it was untrue even as I spoke. Though I tried so hard to ignore it, a tiny bit of me still hoped one day my parents would see me for who I truly was. Graduation day arrived and passed without any agitation in my household. My great moment came from a fast dinner at some chain restaurant. What then, Leela, is next? Just glancing up from his menu, Dad questioned. Sitting upright, I tried to exude confidence. I actually received a job offer at one of the New York museums. Dad pouted, Leela, I'm not sure. New York comes with a price. The compensation for this work is how much? As I mumbled the not-so-great beginning pay, I felt my face becoming hot. Their apparent disappointment was on show. The rest of the dinner was a jumble of subtly expressed criticism mixed with analogies to Tyler and Oliver's scholastic achievements. Grandma Samantha drew me aside as we were leaving the restaurant. She said, Don't let them dim your light, my dear, pushing a little packet into my hand. Travel to New York. Pursue your dreams. Inside the mail was a check good for my first month's city rent. Trying not to cry, I tightly embraced her. The years following were wild. I poured myself into my profession gradually but certainly building a name for myself in the field of art restoration. I met Noah around this period. Struggling graphic artist Ethan Reed exuded a good smile and a contagious love of his profession. Over our common passion of art and our experiences as underdogs in our areas, we linked right away after some time of dating. I felt it was time for Ethan Reed to see my family. From the second, we sat down. It was obvious my folks had different plans. Ethan Reed was inundated with inquiries, each one more targeted than the previous. So, Noah, Dad said, failing to seem laid back, what precisely do you have long-term professional prospects for? Ethan Reed moved in his seat, clearly uncomfortable. Well, I am developing my clientele. Though it takes time, I am getting better. Mom jumped right in, and from what you now make? is sufficient assistance for a family. My cheeks started to grow heated. Mom, that's not. Ethan Reed squeezed my hand beneath the table and said, It's okay, Leela. I'm working hard to get where I want to be financially yet, Dr. Thompson. Right now I'm not there. The questioning went all through dinner. Every query made me watch Noah's confidence wane and my own wrath mounting. Mom drew me aside as we were headed out. Leela, honey, you have to be reasonable even though you believe you love this boy. You have already decided on a demanding job route. Avoid aggravating it by hanging around with someone without any actual future. Mama, startled at her direct approach, I hissed. Dad pitched in as well. Leela, your mother's correct is indeed. One has to consider their future. Though this Ethan Reed appears decent enough, is he really good enough for you? You could do so much more. Years of pent-up annoyance threatened to explode, and I stood there mute. How could Noah be judged by them? How dare they once more discount my decisions? Reality came hard when Ethan Reed and I were organizing our wedding. Our combined savings were really meager, just sufficient for a basic ceremony. After hours of staring at budget spreadsheets, one night I decided to show it to my parents. Perhaps they might like to participate. Mom, Dad, 
I said gingerly on our weekly call. Lucas James and I have scheduled the wedding date. Although we are attempting to keep expenses under control, I was wondering whether you might perhaps assist a bit, even solely with the planning. On the other side of the telephone, the quiet was protracted and embarrassing. Mom spoke at last, her voice as frigid ice. Leela, today you are an adult. If you have decided to wed this individual, you must personally deal with the fallout. Not really surprised, I had a feeling like garbage. Grandma Samantha once more swooped in to save the day. She didn't hesitate when I explained the circumstances. Her voice soft over the phone. My dear, she said, I may not be able to give you the wedding of your dreams, but I want to help make your day special. She provided some money that, albeit not much, greatly changed our plans. When the wedding day finally arrived, I felt both exhilaration and anxiety churning in my gut. Simple but elegant, the community facility we hired had twinkly lights and wildflower decorations. Our little gathering of friends had contributed to everything from the decor to the baked dessert. Noah's face brightened with a smile that made all the effort worthwhile as I moved down the improvised aisle. I momentarily forgot about everything else, the financial hardship, my relatives being jerks, and simply felt the love shining from his eyes. The bubble exploded the moment I saw my family. Sitting rigid in the front row, Mom and Dad looked bored and dissatisfied, Mom murmuring to Dad about the tacky decorations and cheap food caught me. Tyler and Lucas were even worse, snickering in the corner and continuously on their phones. Focusing on our vows and the encouraging faces of our friends, I attempted to overlook them, but I didn't really understand exactly how nasty they could be until the next day. My phone was flashing a ton of alerts when I woke up. Tyler and Lucas had gone on social media sharing a lot of ugly wedding pictures. Congrats to our big sis on her special day, said one caption under a hazy picture of Ethan Reed and myself slicing our homemade cake. Nothing suggests true love like a dollar store wedding. Another post featured a photograph of the buffet table next to a picture of a lavish lunch taken from an upscale restaurant. Leela's Weddings Hour Tuesday Lunch Average. Which one is which? Guess now. The section on comments was a conflict zone. The brothers' actions stunned some relatives. This is just unacceptable. You ought to be embarrassed of yourselves, Aunt Rachel said. Others, though, seem to find it amusing. Savage yet true. That wedding seemed to our cousin Tim like a homeless convention. Reading over the comments made me ill. Seeing my parents' reactions, though, really tore at me. They were actually pushing their sons on, not discouraging them. Mom had remarked, men will be men. It's only a little harmless fun. I didn't demand an apology or phone them merely chose to temporarily ignore them. It was time for the yearly Thompson family gathering six months following our wedding. Though I fretted about it, Ethan Reed advised me to go, expecting it would be an opportunity to clear the air. Man, we were mistaken. One could cut the thick tension with a knife. For the first hour, I was able to keep it together. I avoided my immediate family as much as I could and engaged polyd conversation. Then, naturally, I heard Tyler boasting about his most recent elegant trip, paid for by our parents. Something inside of me just caught. Must be nice, I exclaimed, loud enough for everyone to hear, to have mother and father bankroll your entire life. The room became absolutely silent. Tyler fixed me with gaping mouth. What's that supposed to mean? Years of pent-up discontent suddenly bubbling over, I shot back, you know exactly what it means. You and Lucas have been handed everything on a silver platter, while I's fight for every scrap of recognition or support has been required. Mom moved forward, flushed with rage on her face. Now, Leela, you're acting quite foolish. Children, we have always treated you equally. I gave out a sour laugh. Also, similarly, are you really kidding me? Let us discuss equal, shall we? I began to count off on my fingers. 
for the boys, private school tuition, for me, public school, for their 16 birthdays, brand new automobiles, nothing for me, not to mention their crowning accomplishment, $300,000 for their Ivy League medical degrees, while I had to make do with loans and scholarships. The room was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. All eyes were on our family's soiled linen being aired so publicly. Mom spoke with icy, chilly voice. If you're so fixated on money, Leela, maybe you should have wed someone wealthy instead of your underprivileged husband. Her comments felt to me like a stomach punch. Noah stiffened next to me. He had been silently encouraging me. Hey, child, do dare you. I hissed, tears in my eyes. Ten of you are worth Ethan Reed, not for how I may make him look good to his country club mates. He really loves me for who I am. The reunion descended onto complete anarchy. Everyone was accusing others, bringing up long-standing animosity and past grievances. Amid all the yelling, a loud voice sliced through the commotion. Sufficient. Everyone turned to see Grandma Samantha rising up, her typically kind face looking austere and angry. I have watched this family split itself for years, and I won't stand for it anymore, she said. Samantha, Robert, your Lilla treatment has been appalling. And you boys, she said, turning to Tyler and Oliver, your cruelty toward your sister is terrible. The room was still for a time. Mom never won to back down, spouted, Mother, you don't understand. Leela has always been challenging and prone to trouble. Grandma cut off. No, Samantha, the only problem here is your obvious favoritism and incapacity to see the damage you have done. I gazed about the room at the startled features of my relatives, at my grandmother's firm posture, at my parents' ire, and at my brother's haughtiness. Something inside of me cracked at that instant and then returned together differently. I'm done, I stated in a low but forceful voice. I'm done trying to be part of this poisonous family and to seek your approval. Don't bother attempting to get in touch, Ethan Reed and I are leaving. The next few months were hard. My rock throughout all was Ethan Reed, celebrated the little successes, hogged me when the grief struck, and never once made me feel terrible about the familial dysfunction I had brought into our life. Unbelievably, life throws you for a loop when you least expect it. It began with a phone call. For weeks, Ethan Reed had been working his butt, giving everything he had to a big-time customer. I could tell from the expression on his face when he answered the phone that lovely Tuesday morning that something significant had fallen apart. His voice just above a whisper, he added, We got it. Leela, we have the contract here. The next three months were insane. Noah's small design company exploded overnight, the elegant customer unlocking doors we never would have seen. We were rolling in it rather than only scraping by suddenly. But our new success also brought an unanticipated problem. My phone began bursting with alerts. Friend requests from family members I had long since blocked, messages from far-off cousins suddenly want to catch up, and then the call I had been postponing. Leela, sweetheart, my mother said, sickly sweet across the telephone. We have heard the fantastic news regarding Noah's company. We knew you two would make perfect. They continued to arrive, talking about how proud they were and how they had always believed in us my father joined the queue. I listened in startled quiet, growing enraged with every untruth. Mom chipped in. We'd love to see you. Maybe we could all have dinner, celebrate your success as a family. That brought me out of it. For a family. I kept repeating, speaking with great force. We haven't been a family for a long time. That's not going to change just because our bank account has. Stayed to keep my guns. Forbade my parents from entering our house when they unexpectedly arrived up. I returned elegant goods they sent right back, unopened. Ethan Reed and I instead concentrated on creating the life we had always desired. 
We saved wisely, worked long, and finally found ourselves signing paperwork for a lovely apartment smack in the midst of the city. Happy to express our joy, I put a picture on social media. Ethan Reed and I were standing in front of our new house keys in hand, a basic shot. Beside it was a picture of our most recent visit with Grandma Samantha, her pleased smile flashing at the camera. New beginnings and old love, I wrote under. Thanks for those who have been there through all. Fresh house, family. Felt when I hit post as though some weight had been taken off my shoulders. Now, Noah, Grandma Samantha, and the friends who had supported us through good times and bad represented my family. Notwithstanding all the people who claimed we couldn't do it, we had created this life for ourselves. As I was busy in the kitchen preparing dinner for Grandma Samantha and Ethan Reed, the warm evening light was streaming through our new apartment windows, our first true family supper at our new location, and I wanted everything to be perfect. That serenity was instantly broken by the forceful, rapid beating on the front door. Leela, speak. We certainly know you are in there. My blood went cold. Anywhere, Tyler and Oliver, I would know their voices. The door exploded open before I could even respond. With angry looks, my brothers rushed in. Before Tyler was in my face, jabbing an accusing finger at my chest, I'd hardly had time to observe Ethan Reed rising to his feet. You manipulative small, he snarled. Although we knew you were playing the long game, this is low even for you. Startled by the degree of anger in his speech, I staggered back. What are you talking about? Lucas laughed, and that sounded harsh and unpleasant. Don't pretend to be dumb, Leela. We spotted your tiny social media post with Grandma posing in your new place. You believe we cannot put two and two together. It struck me what they were thinking. You suppose Grandma bought us this apartment? We are aware she did. Tyler spit. You've been playing the poor, neglected child for years, wringing your way into her good graces, and now you've manipulated her into making you the sole heir. I straightened my spine in a flash of wrath. You speak of nothing at all. Ethan Reed and I paid for this flat using our own earnings. Lucas snarled, his gaze darting about the space. Right, sure you did. Where in particular is the old bat? Hiding her away will help us not to speak sense into her. By now, that insane elderly woman ought to be in a graveyard. I am looking forward her kicking the bucket so I may sell her house and live it up. The room went very quiet. I momentarily wondered whether I might have dreamed those terrible words. Then a low voice emerged from the guest room door. This is thus essentially how you feel about me. Grandma Samantha was standing there, her face a mask of shock and despair. All heads turned to watch. Tyler and Oliver's faces lost color when they knew their grandmother had heard every word. Grandma, Tyler began, we, we didn't mean. Elizabeth turned him off with a hand. I've heard enough, she responded with a gentle but forceful voice. I at last know who really values me and who regards me as nothing more than a meal ticket. Thanks to my grandmother's presence, I found my voice. I think you both ought to leave right now. Though one glance at Grandma's face, a mix of hurt and resolve, seemed to depress them. It appeared as though they may dispute at first. Slunk toward the door, they murmured feeble apologies. That wild evening hit like a storm with consequences. My phone would not stop vibrating, reminding me of the chaos that had exploded nonstop. Mom's name sprang on the screen for what felt like the millionth time. Against my better sense, I grabbed. Leela, her voice was cutting, not at all like a mother's. You have to correct this. The lads have your grandmother rather angry. You have to straighten things out and tell her it was only a misinterpretation. I gave out a sour laugh. A misinterpretation? Declaring they couldn't wait for her to die so they could sell her house? They broke into my residence. Exactly how is that a misinterpretation? They didn't mean it, Dad said, apparently on speakerphone. You know the lads can be. 
they were only unhappy. Upper about what? I protested. That Ethan Reed and I paid our own money for an apartment. That Grandma loves me. Mom spoke in sickly sweet tones. Sweetheart, although you have always felt excluded, you have to consider what would be best for the family. Your brothers are due that legacy. Avoid being self-serving. I snapped something inside of me. Years of pent-up resentment and damage were flooding forth. Selfish. You find me to be selfish. After years of favoritism, of discounting my successes, of treating Ethan Reed and me like second-class citizens, and now you have the arrogance to demand I give up an inheritance I never even requested. Dad started, now Lila, but I interrupted him. No, I am finished. I am done with the guilt trips, the manipulation, all of it. Please not call me once more. Refrain from texting. Failed to show up at my door. We are past. I banned their numbers as well as Tyler and Oliver over the next few days, though it was terrible like amputating a sick limb, mending could start only from this point. The dust dispersed and I discovered another sort of warmth all around. Now completely aware of the familial dynamics she had long suspected, Grandma Samantha became even more regular in our life. Reaching out following the wedding disaster, Aunt Rachel started visiting often. I always knew you were unique, Leela, she replied, giving me a firm hug. I apologize for not defending you sooner. Other relatives, cousins and distant aunts and uncles who had seen my family mistreated throughout the years, reached out to offer encouragement. It was as if a veil had been lifted, allowing real relationships to blossom where only obligation had once been. Bliss Noah's family? They enveloped me in an unbroken love blanket. His parents went out of their way to make me loved after seeing from the sidelines as my own family broke me down. Ethan Reed and I put ourselves toward inhabiting our new flat. Every piece of furniture and every picture on the wall were evidence of the life we were creating together, a life based on love, respect, and encouragement. 